Welcome to the Grizzled Geek. I'm Mike. I'm Doug. And we're here to review Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yes. Uh, good movie. Yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler it's, alert. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Uh, <laughs> of course, I don't know what you come to expect from Marvel, but... Yeah. I mean... It has been a long time since they've had a miss, so... Iron Man 3 was the last one? Yeah. In my yeah, Iron Man three was. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. It just wasn't a good Marvel movie. It was a bad movie. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. I, all right. I mean, it was a. Yeah, it just I don't know. It wasn't it was Thor: Dark a, World. It was just weird. It was goofy. Yeah, but it had a minor hiccup there in Phase Two, but then yeah, coming out strong since then, and Ant Man and the Wasp is no exception. Now, what did you think of the first Ant Man and the Wasp? I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, I like it's a nice refreshing like it's a comedy. I mean, let's be yeah. great. I mean, all Marvel movies have some comedic elements to mm -hmm. them to varying degrees. But Ant-Man and the Wasp or Ant-Man, the original and Ant-Man and the Wasp is by and large a comedy movie mm -hmm. with some part storytelling and, you know, under, kind of an underlying, you know, feely type of movie. Yeah. Um and I, it's PG thirteen, which is I guess is because of all of the fighting, but because otherwise I'm not really sure what in the world was why it was supposed to be PG thirteen because it's the most family friendly I think. Yeah. Uh, maybe next to Spider Man, but um, otherwise yeah, Spider Man has some dark themes, so I guess I think it's, yeah. it's more. I don't yeah, know. It's pretty, but it's pretty family friendly. I, I you know, so I'm yeah. not sure what the PG thirteen is about. There is a lot of hard-hitting action in a couple of scenes but overall yeah yeah nothing 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 horrible yeah nothing bad at all I mean I don't know I I, I really like the first movie um, I liked it because it was just like a small you know it was a heist movie it was yeah. a you know didn't it wasn't like the big spectacle uh, I liked them because yeah they're comedies they're funny but they're not like all I think like Thor Ragnarok was more of a comedy than it was right but I think mm -hmm. I think Thor uh, Ragnarok got away with a lot more of the kind of like over the top slapstick kind of oh no, not quite slapstick but uh -huh. over the top comedy right. because of the you know over the top you know locations and everything that was going well, on there yeah. you know what I mean I got away with it more like I didn't mind it in, in that yeah uh, you know there was a few things a few comedy beats that didn't quite work for me in this movie but we'll get to those in the spoiler section. Okay. Just just to remind you how things work, we're going to give you their review at non spoiler, spoiler free, and then we'll warn you when we go into the spoilers in the second yep. half. Um, but overall, I mean, I I think this was a I think this is what we needed. By the way, we call it the palate cleanser. <laughs> yes. After Infinity War, right? For the most part. Yes. This was a much lighter, uh, lighter film. It was yeah. even even the, the serious parts of the film were, were lighter. Um, but once again, I think uh, the main the best part about this movie, I was like the first one, is the relationships, right? Yeah. Um, the relationship true. with uh, Yvette and Lily, you know, with, with Hope and with Scott. Yeah. And with Scott and his daughter, Casey. Yeah, I think Scott that and was. His daughter was big. Was a big deal. Yeah. I mean, that was that was big in the first one, but I think it's even more. I like it even more in this movie. Right. You know. So. Yeah, because you got past that step family. Yeah. Issue, you know, ex con issue, and everybody's kind of like. Yeah, they're they, they're all in it together as a family, they're so you could big, yeah. not worry about that that conflict and just work on the relationship. So it was cool, right? Yeah, and I think um, I think you know they had you know Michael Pena and, and his ex con buddies. They were in it. Not they didn't have as much to do in this one as they did in this first movie. But and I think they, they didn't have as much of substance to do. But yeah. they were in it a lot. They were in it. They were in it quite a yeah. bit. And uh, but I don't think they were. There's where you get rid of the the problem with the over the top, fun, you know, goofy stuff. But I don't. I think it was fine with what we had, you know, for the most part. So those were the yeah. I mean, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael Pena is always fun. Michael Pena is yeah, great. he's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think it was it was great. It's it's you know we didn't have the after the heavy themes of Infinity War, we needed a light you know comedy mm -hmm. and with family. Stuff and you know, uh, you know, we know Michelle Pfeiffer's in it, you know, yeah, she's amazing and as lovely as ever, yes. Oh, and <laughs> the, one of the great things about this movie when you get to the Michelle Pfeiffer parts, 
uh, and leading up to that is I now have confidence and a slight desire for them to get Fantastic Four and do a Fantastic Four movie because this was leaning that direction. Yes. The absolutely. whole, we're getting ready to go to a different dimension kind of stuff. And you're like, oh, yeah. awesome. All yeah. right. The way they handled this, I was like, okay, I could buy into a Fantastic Four movie. Right, now. exactly. In fact, there's several, there's, uh, you know, some scenes where you know, the whole Whoever the director of this movie was. Peyton I, Reed, same as the first one. Who was it? Peyton Reed, same oh, okay. as the first okay. one. Yeah. He could probably do a Fantastic Four. He's been wanting to do a Fantastic Four. In fact, he pitched I, a Fantastic Four movie. I think you could see it in this movie yeah. that he wanted to do a Fantastic <laughs> Four movie. Which was cool. It worked really well, and I think yeah. he could nail the dynamic between Thing and Johnny Storm. Yes. Um, so, I we'll think see. so. Yeah, I mean, the whole family dynamic was great. I like the, I like the fact that... Uh, they portray, without getting into any spoilers, but they portray Hank Pym. Because if you know Hank Pym in the comics or any of the, in the past, he's not a he's, great person, right? Yeah. He's, and he's, yeah, he's not the A-list, in, A-list intellect. Yeah, he's not the A-list intellect. Or, and he's not really, I mean, he's, depending he's on what person, person, he's a damaged person, right? Yeah. And they actually show show that uh, more in this movie than the last one, right? Right. Uh, where you know you see his relationships with his, you know the, his colleagues in the past and right. various things, and you're like, okay, yeah, they're actually not playing him up as like you know the the hero or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. he actually is a damaged person. You know, right? Yeah, maybe not as damaged as some of the iterations in the comics and that, right. but you know, he's still. Uh, but I like that fact that they went that way. You know, yeah, that they actually you know showed that. Um, you know, there was the, the bad guy as far as uh, like Ghost goes. I thought, uh, not what I expected. I ex- not what I expected, but I liked. Um, yeah, I, well, I liked this was not like off, you know off the shelf bad guy number four or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. It was, wasn't just was like a oh, unique twist to the bad guy here. Yes, and um, the antagonist. The antagonist. Yeah, we'll get we'll get into well, that there, in the spoilers. Yeah, there were multiple we'll, bad guys. Multiple actually. bad guys, and we'll get in, we'll get into that in the spoilers, but. Yeah, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, Hannah John Carmen, the, she she did an amazing job, especially at one point. She did a better job outside of the mask than she did with the, you know, as a bad guy in the mask, I think. I really yeah. liked... I mean, yeah, the bad... She was in the mask. You have this kind of, like, mysterious, but yet somewhat generic bad guy. Yeah. Like, bad guy with powers more, with better powers than you so it whoops <laughs> up on you for a while until you figure out what's going on yeah kind of thing so but yeah no, it was it was good it was I, I, I liked her better than Yellow Jacket from the first one yeah because I mean of course Hull, now. yeah it, yes absolutely because I yeah, I think Yellow Jacket was the weak link of the first movie. yeah I mean the bad guy well and now that we've seen what they can do in this, in this movie, yeah. they just they undersold that, you know, shrinking and growing and fighting, you know, that stuff. Because yes. there were some amazing fight scenes with um, Ant Man and Wasp, yeah, shrinking and growing and attacking and stuff like that, and yes. d- you know, double teaming people and stuff like that. That just was like, this was awesome the way they, you know, they used their shrinking powers to fight. Yes. It was, it was very cool, so. Yeah, absolutely. And you've actually, in the course of the movie, you actually see how this fits in in the, in the universe, right? Like mm-hmm. after Civil War, you know, before Avengers, right. Infinity War, you know, and exactly the... They even hint at the fact that they were working together as Ant-Man and the Wasp before, prior yeah. to Civil War. Yeah. So that was an interesting little tidbit that they threw in. Yeah. There was a lot, there's a lot of little, little things in there. It, you let you know that it was part of the larger Marvel universe without mm-hmm. actually, you know, having to show you everything or have cameos or. Well, you know, it was it, you it, it was even used as uh, as a comedic tool. Yeah, he's like, you know, when I was with Cap, she's like Cap. <laughs> he's like, well, uh, you know, his friends, you know, <laughs> friends. Well, I know I am. <laughs> you know, so, so it was pretty funny. Yeah. So yeah, it's, overall, I mean, like I said, I I really enjoyed the movie. I I. Don't know where if I like it more than the first one or not, um, but I'm yeah. mostly on the side of I think it's better. You think it's better than the first one? I, I kind of you know I, if it is, it's better in the whole him and his daughter relationship. That 
you know, the quality of the fight scenes Mm -hmm. and the majority of the comedy, but not all of it. There are some there are comedic some elements that did that they did way better in the first one, and we'll talk in spoilers about yeah. that part. But yeah, yeah. But I think largely they did better, and most you know the the antagonists are better. Mm. Well, one of the antagonists is better, and the other one was almost a comedy antagonist. I don't know how uh, to put him. Yeah, but we'll yeah we'll talk about him. Yes. So let's yeah we're too many too many <laughs> we'll talk about this later. That's <laughs> ready to go. But yeah, go let's, see the movie. Yeah, let's. Yeah, really well, you want to rate it before we get into the spoilers? I don't even know what we've used for a rating system anymore, or what we've rated stuff before. But this is a <laughs> solid B plus movie. Let's do it. You know, like school grades. School grades. We, we switch every we switch, time. I was gonna say it's like a one to one five, to ten, one, one to ten. To, well, you know, it's easier to. I think that's an easier because that's how uh, CineScore. Gives a grade, so um, so yeah, I would say I would yeah. agree with because it was like eighty four percent Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. 84. So I think that score is a little low. I'd give it up in the upper eighties. B plus. Yeah, it's a B plus movie. It is. I mean, it's not top tier Marvel, but it is a good, yeah. funny, family friendly. In my opinion, family friendly. If you're okay with comedic, you're not comedic violence, but you know, like superhero violence. Yeah. You know, it's you don't see blood spraying or anything like that. You see some superheroes beating up on people yeah. and some bad guys shooting guns that never hit anything. Yeah, the one um, that's with a gun in this movie. You know, it, so, that's that's it. Yeah. If you're okay with your kids seeing that and uh, you know and understanding that this is yeah fantasy, it's it's superheroes. You know, that's not something you go out and do. Yeah. Then I don't see why this is. Uh, I don't know why it was given PG thirteen. Have no idea. It's got to be the all the dead ants being eaten by your seagulls. <laughs> it could be <laughs> the trauma of seeing ants eaten by seagulls. <laughs> there you uh, go. Now we know. All right. Yeah. Now we know where it's PG thirteen. All right, guys. There you have it. Good movie. If you haven't seen it yet, stop watching now. Go watch it, and then come back and then finish the video with our spoiler section, which we're going to get into here in five, four, three. Two, one. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, it's... I will say the one weird thing about this is there there is no real bad guy other than uh, Walter Scoggins' character, uh, what, Sonny, Sonny Beach, the good guy who's trying to steal... Birch. The, Birch. Sonny Birch. Whatever. Yeah. He's a, he's kind of a wasted well, bad yeah, guy. Well, yeah, because they never go anywhere. I mean, even if you're given a post credit scene to say yeah. who he was working for, he just says, ah, oh, some dangerous guys wanted me right. to get this. We never fe- find out who those den- dangerous guys it's are. Is it Is it AIM? Yeah. Is it, you know, they, they had an opportunity they had a lot to throw of, in yeah. to make him not a wasted them. character. Because he is pretty much comedy relief, right? He is. Cause, well, because you yeah. never, like, you can never really quite um, figure out how is this? Because this is where you fall down with not saying who it is that's this big nasty who's... Yeah. How do you get this guy Otherwise, out? why would you keep going when you've gotten so thoroughly trashed yeah. at every step? Why would you keep trying to get this? Clearly outmatched. Bad guys? You're you know, clearly this, outmatched. He's never a threat. Yeah. He's a bad guy who's never a threat to anybody except maybe, uh, you know, the ex-cons. Michael Pena and the ex-cons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's literally the company's name is Xcon Security. X-Con Security, yeah. Xcon Security. <laughs> Which uh, is funny. I yeah, mean, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's a good great. name. Uh, but yeah, there, the ghost isn't really. She's an antagonist for part of it, but she's not really. She's not a bad guy. Um, I will say the she's a, yeah, she's desperate and willing to go and do bad things to accomplish her goal. But right. but she's because not, she's dying. Yeah, exactly, and, and she's, constant she's pain. Poor. So, and then, you know, uh, Bill Foster's character, or, I mean, Lord Fisher's character, Bill Foster, he had a turn for a minute there, I thought. You thought, oh, wow. When he shows up, you think, oh, wow, he's the big bad. Yeah. Oh, no, he's, t- and he immediately tells him, no, nah, I'm just helping her. Yeah, he just, yeah, he's, he's <laughs> doing just, it just to I'm to trying help. to cure her. She's, you know, this is bad. Yeah. This, this. So he's not a bad guy either. So, uh, although, I'm going to ask you one thing. It, it, it just came out of this movie. Did you think Michael Douglas was, or, or Hickman was dead when he, she had, she had his hair, her hand through his throat for a minute there in the theater? Did you thought? Oh, because um, I was like, 
No, I was pretty sure he wasn't going to die there. What? But I, I there was, was another. Right after that. There was another point where I did think he was dead, and that's when her mom gets Get out back, of the, yeah. gets out and he comes in, up and he's not there. It's all smoky and stuff like that. And then we saw the it was going to be a juxtaposition at the beginning of the movie where he had to tell her that, that her mom was was gone. Yeah. Right. I thought it was going to be her having to tell him that her dad's yeah. gone, but no. No. It's big happy, happy family. Um, all right, so I can tell you where. I'm just getting some of the parts we we didn't like. Uh, where some of the humor didn't land, I think, was I think for me solely with with Randall Park's character Jimmy Woo. I think he was a kind of a joke of a character. Oh, right? yeah. See, I, mean, I didn't. I, every time he was on, every time he, he I mean, he seemed like a bumbling idiot, right? He seems. More slapstick than he wasn't like a, like a believable character. He was kind of like a, a too. They went too comedic with him, right? Yeah. And then if you know Jimmy Woo is like a shield agent in the comics, right? And he's not, you know. Yeah, he's not an FBI agent. Yeah, an FBI he's agent. Not which, incompetent. <laughs> he's not incompetent. And, uh, and to see him in here, because I mean, you expect that kind of goofy behavior from you know the ex-cons, right? Right. Because that's what they're known for. Michael Pena, you know, that's his mm-hmm. character. But when you see like an FBI agent, like you know, I don't know. Just he, every time he was on scene, I, it kind of drug me out of it a little bit because he wasn't a believable character. Where you can believe um, Michael Pena is that kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't buy into Jimmy Woo. That's funny because um, I yeah. I mean, while you when you say it like that, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess so. But I never really even invested that much in his character. He was yeah. just kind of there as a looming threat over. Scott, that he had to worry about. The problem is that he wasn't a threat because, he, much like the Walter Scoggins bad guy, you know, well, he they was were a, never threat a threat in that if he actually went to his house and found him not there, then he was in trouble. Yeah, that was the or actually showed up where he was, then you know, then he was yeah. in trouble. Um, the fact that they turned it into a joke that he couldn't quite catch him, I guess, in at the time, didn't really bother me too much. Yeah. Um, but I can see what you're saying about yeah. He just he does have a few like cringy like yeah. Did you go? Did you want to go get something? Did you want to? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you get this feeling that he's like this this nice guy that's yeah. thrown into this position where he's not he trying to be a quite tough agent. In. But yeah. yeah, and yeah. So anyways, yeah. but yeah, yeah trying I, to learn sleight of hand. Like how'd you do that? <laughs> it was funny because everybody asked yeah. him, how'd you do that when he does his little sleight of hand. <laughs> yeah. Because if you, I mean, the plot of the movie is, this is two years, or almost two years after Civil War, and he's under house arrest. Scott's under house arrest. All right. So he's been living inside his house for two years, trying to keep himself busy. So he's... He's in the final days. Yeah. Before he's free. So he's been learning magic tricks, and how to <laughs> sing karaoke, yeah. and playing on one of those little fake drum kits, and yes. just goofy stuff that he's just like, I'm trying to keep myself sane, because I can't <laughs> leave my house. But... Yeah. And the whole main plot of the story is, is they're trying to save uh, Janet, the wasp, there's a wasp, from yes. the quantum realm, mm-hmm. right? And apparently she's kind of... Uh, it printed herself on Scott when he was down there. Yeah, that was cool. So that was that was kind of cool. Another, I, I will say another criticism I have of the movie, um, and like I said, neither one of the, the, the whole Jimmy Woo in this is not, not the deal breakers. It's still a really yeah. good movie. Yeah. There's nothing that was glaring, like I can't believe they did this, was um, they kind of went against uh, things they set up in the first movie, right? Like, one of the, one of the things that kind of stood out to me was... Uh, well, I mean, two different things. So it was the shrinking, right? Because mm-hmm. Hank Pym can't shrink anymore, right? Because he's he's done too much, right? There's too much strain on his too right. much strain on his body. But yet he's the one that actually shrinks himself and goes the same. Well, same Janet. they play that up because yeah. while he's down there, he's kind he's of suffering, yeah, he's suffering and fading in and out. And that's why you could believe when they come back up that ooh, maybe he didn't survive. Maybe didn't, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But part of, because it's such a strain, and you need this environmental suit. In order to, to to shrink, they kind of throw that rule out. They step that they establish that rule in the first movie, and then they kind of throw it out this movie when they can shrink and grow willy nilly in the cars. You know, like Michael oh. Michael Pena's sh- can shrink down. I'm like, why why do you even need the suits anymore if you don't if you can just do it 
uh, willy nilly right? inside the car. Yeah. And that was the whole point that they set up in the first movie. You need this in this suit in order to, you know, probably to protect yourself, not yeah. necessarily to be able to do it. Well, but you notice that when they shrink, I believe. I, Maybe you have to see this again, but I don't think Hank is ever in a car that shrinks. No, he's not. He's, in, he's yeah, not. So. But but Michael Pena is, and he's not in a suit. Yeah. And so. then Jan, and, and, and then Hope, she's in a car. Well, they're in a car without out of the suits when they're shrinking. Yeah. So they they kind of establish that rule that you need to have this, you know, environmental suit or whatever to shrink in the first movie, and then they kind of throw it out the unless I guess the vehicle itself could be. It's a containment. Containment. So who knows? Yeah, I don't know. It was one of those things that you're like, okay, I don't know. It doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the movie, but while you're... It'd be interesting to see if the Blu-ray has yeah. cut scenes where they talk about that or anything. Yeah. But, like, little things like that, I, I you know, it's not necessary. The general movie going on is, does, doesn't need to have this stuff explained. But I'm the kind of guy that I would, like, just, like, want to throw away line yeah. explaining, you know, why they're doing this. And maybe it got cut for time. Or and maybe it got cut for time. Maybe it's in there. Well, and they totally ignored, they, they just leaned into it and went, all right, forget the thing about everything keeps its mass when it shrinks. Because, you know, he he puts the, shrinks the suit and puts it inside the trophy, which the girl is able to easily pick up. Yeah. You yeah. carry around a bunch of real cars shrunk down inside like a Hot Wheels Hot container. Hot Wheels case, yeah. Hot Wheels case, so, yeah. I mean... It's, yeah. Well, he kind of did that in the first one because he was carrying a tank around on his keychain. Right. Chain. I mean, and that was one of the one of the com- criticisms of the first one is yeah. you set up this concept that when you shrink, you keep your density. That's why you can hit so hard. Or, yeah, that's why you can hit so hard and stuff. But then, yeah, he's carrying around a tank, so yeah. he just kind of leaned into that and said, "Well, no, yeah, yeah, the uh, things are lighter." I mean, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, they <laughs> shunt off part of their mass someplace else. Right. Uh, I will say, um, Vegetal and Lily was awesome as the Wasp. Uh, she, you like, look at her like, why does she even need Ant-Man with her? Because she's a badass. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't really. <laughs> she didn't. She's got blasters, he can fly, of course he can, he can grow. So I guess that's his thing he's got. Yeah. He's got, uh, going for him. He's, he can actually, he, he can enlarge himself and she can fly. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, their relationship, not, and I'm, and they start off at odds. You can tell that the you know the whole civil war was a strain on the relationship, right? And they broke yeah. up and and all this stuff like that. But I like the fact that they just didn't have like um, you know fall right back into it. But they gradually over the course of this movie, and that's one thing. I, the relationship is what they did really well in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, their relationship that actually built up, you know, over the course of the movie, where you actually buy them getting together back together at the end. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and they even like, tease it. Yeah, you know, up to a certain point, she's like, "All right, she's warming up to him." Yeah, and then he he gives away their location, and then yeah. she's like pissed off. You're like, "You're ruining my chance to get my mom." Yeah, I hate you again. <laughs> but I mean, I hate. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's little things. It's not just like they don't sit down and go like, "Okay, I missed you." I'll well, uh, have a talk. But you know, they're like uh, lingering gaze, whatever. They look at each other, you know, mm-hmm. or just the way you know, just the relationship. And then great Hank will comment on it all yeah. the time. Like, are you going to stop daydreaming about my daughter and go help her or whatever? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love those. Oh, those are great lines. Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is yeah, really well done. I, see, now you... I want to step back real quick because you said the, you mm-hmm. know, that Michael... Pena? Uh, Pena? No. Oh. The Jimmy Woo oh, okay. character. Um, that comedy kind of took you out. The... Some of the times, the Michael Pena and the ex-con humor took me out of it. Oh, really? More yeah. than the first one? No. Okay, well, that was the problem. Okay. Is the comedy... Their comedy was pretty much exactly the same as it was in the first movie. Yes. Um, and so it felt at times... Now, most of the time, I thought they were pretty hilarious. Yes. But there were times when you were just like, oh, okay, this is just treading old ground, and it's just kind of annoying now, not really funny. Um... So I like I didn't particularly like his interaction with Hank Pym when he was all like, "Oh, you coming to us uh, for yeah. help again?" Blah blah blah. That that interaction didn't play out very well, <laughs> but like the truth serum did. That yeah, that was true. Was awesome. Was truth serum was amazing. Was awesome. You know, yeah. so um, yeah. and I was couldn't decide whether or not the 
him narrating all of the people as they were as he was telling the past annoyed me or not. Oh, it was funny. You hit one of his stories. I mean, you got yeah. two of them in the first movie, right? Yes. But uh, what was that? What was the line? It was a great line where he said, "Like, oh, you put you put a dime in the jukebox, you listen to the whole song." <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was. Yeah, that was funny. That was a great line. That was the best line from the two other cons, whose names I can't even remember what their character names are. Um, I like the Baba Yaga bit, too. The Baba Yaga bit was kind of funny, but Baba Yaga. Uh, But yeah, I I like that. See, here's here's the thing. I like that those characters, like a character like Michael Pena, if you're going to have like the borderline slapstick, goofy comedy, right? He's a good actor to have in it. He's good, yeah. One... But if you have like one one character, right? That, that's that way, right? Yeah. If it, you know, then it's it's fine. It's not. You, it doesn't. The whole world's not like that, right? Right. You yeah. realize that that's just one guy that's super eccentric, or you know, <laughs> that's just the way he is. You know, and you could buy into that more if it's just one person, and he's right. a great person to do that with, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and like I said, for the most part, Michael Pena is hilarious. There yes. are just a few moments where you're kind of like, I'm not buying into this or it's you know this is kind of you know just not just not landing well for right. the comedy but overall it's good. was there any, any other issues you had with it or the <sighs> uh, my other big issue was the bad was the secondary bad guy who I'm just oh, yeah. like why would you keep coming yeah true why would you you've seen them like flip your cars and right. just take out your guys and again and this, right. this is all stuff that could be fixed with one scene which may you know have had to been cut or whatever, you know. Yeah. Like, like who these... are these guys that are so breathing down his neck? Yeah, I mean that'd be cool if it was like AIM trying to, you know, what yeah, I mean? somebody. That would be Justin Hammer bring Justin him Hammer. back. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, just something, you know, drop a name or just like a hint or something like that. Uh, what's going on? And like I said, again, yeah, it may that have helped bring build the the uh, you yeah. know the extended Marvel universe that doesn't necessarily even have to show up in anything else. Just know it's there, and the comic fans will be going, "Oh yeah, all right, sweet." Right. Yeah. It's so exactly. So I mean, it's just little things, and they might, you know, like I said, the Blu-ray may show up, and I see all this stuff Maybe. that was cut, you know. Yeah. Um, for time or whatnot, but <clears throat> yeah, but these are all little things. None of them are like take you out of the movie or, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, make it not a good movie. It's I mean, right. it's a great movie. Uh, let's talk about Michelle Pfeiffer. She's not. Uh, I was hoping for more of her character, but I understand. I mean, the whole mm-hmm. purpose behind the movie is to to save her. Right? Oh, and we see uh, two great examples of Disney's. They've mastered this de aging technology. Oh my goodness! They made Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer look perfect as oh, the past yeah. versions of themselves. You're just like, wow! I could totally buy that these guys. That yeah, they had filmed this scene twenty years ago or thirty years ago. Yeah. And just had it waiting for this movie. <laughs> so they've, they've mastered it at this point. Yes, yeah. The de aging effect. I'm like, it was great. So yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, I liked her. Yeah, like she's only in it for ten minutes, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I could tell immediately when she showed up in in cos in like her nomad costume or right, whatever. Yeah. Um, that that wasn't a blade. You could see that it was her wing. Her wing, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, oh, look at the layout. You know, but Hank's apparently freaking out too much to notice yeah. right away. It's like, yeah, it's Janet's wing. It's where, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. And she was cool. I even like, I, I really liked, I want to say, I'm impressed with, with Paul Rudd, right, in, in his mm-hmm. acting. Because you don't pick, picture him as, you know, a great actor. He's like a comedic actor, right? Right, yeah. He's an awesome person. He's been, you know, you love him in this, but like, all right, the scene where he's like, she's possessed him, or yeah, whatever. It's channeling. <laughs> it's funny, but it's also funny, but believable too. It's yeah. in one weird, in a weird way that you're like, okay, I buy that, you know. Right. Where sometimes when you when you know people like swap personalities, someone has to portray the other person or whatever, you know. Usually, you know, at worst you get like a caricature of the other person, or at best you kind of like okay, uh, over the top, you know, over the top, yeah. yeah. So, but no, it was he had, he had a great performance. At that point, so I was like, I was impressed with that, and I gotta tell you, his like I said, I mentioned it several times, but his relationship with his daughter, who she's awesome as well, yeah. right? You know, I mean, and that, that sold the movie for him right there. Yeah. If nothing else, that movie, you know, the relationship with his daughter, all the way up to like, <laughs> it was funny. She was an awesome character, 
the girl played her daughter. I'd like to see her in stature one day, maybe the Young Avengers. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, they are kind of teased that she wants to be. She wants to be. Wants to be she, wanna, she wants to help people. Yeah, exactly. Which she demonstrated by, you know, basically telling me, you know, go, go be a hero even if it means you can't, you yeah. can't hang out with me or whatever. Yep. So That's that awesome. was, you know, it was a cool, cool character moment for her. Yes. And right, <laughs> world's greatest grandma. That was, <laughs> that was a great line. That was great. That was a great, that was a great punchline. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a, she bought him a trophy. <laughs> the only one that was left was world's greatest grandma. And so, that, so she couldn't get him world's greatest dad, but she went ahead and got the trophy. <laughs> oh, it was uh, great. Yes. Uh, yeah, then that line pays off later on. It's yeah. just, it's just really good. I, I, I don't know. Like I said, this is not the big Avenger spectacle, right? No. Yeah. But this is a great movie. You know, if you're a fan, if you like the first one at all, <clears throat> you need to go see this movie. Right. If you're, you know, a fan of, you know, like the whole family dynamic, superhero right. family dynamic, because mm-hmm. um, you're absolutely right. Until you pointed it out, I mean. The whole, you can see the Fantastic Four fingerprints all over this. Yeah, if you're hoping you know, for a Fantastic Four movie, go watch this to see what you might get from a Fantastic Four movie because this was good. Yeah, and then you know, let them know that Peter has got to do it <laughs> when they yeah. get Fantastic Four finally. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because this was a great movie. I I liked it. Go see it. Uh, well worth it. Definitely what we needed after Avengers: Infinity War. Oh, do we want to talk about the post credits? Oh yeah, we we had pretty. Uh, you gotta talk about the post credit scene. Um, yeah. So yeah, well, well, there's two, right? The one at the very end, you can actually you don't even have to stay. You don't have to stay for it, right? We'll tell you, it's an ant playing his drum set, his right. little toy drum, not toy drum set, but those yeah. little practice drum sets. His yeah. ant is playing that, they, and yeah. that's it. That was one thing in the trailers. I'm like, what the, when I saw the ant playing the drums, I'm like, all right, they're gonna get way goofy with this second movie. <laughs> but they train an ant basically to mimic his behavior. To wear his ankle braces, his ankle so bracelet. it looks like he's still there. <laughs> so yeah, it was I was fine with it in the movie, in the actual yeah. movie yeah. Uh, context of it. But yeah, there's ant playing the drums. But the mid credit scene is one we all speculated about. We knew someone was getting dusted after yeah. after Infinity War, right? Just going to lead right. into this. Who's it going to be? You know, we all thought it was going to be uh, Wasp. You know, she eventually Lily was going to be. Yeah. But it's even worse than that, right? Uh, and the, I was like, you know, I did not expect the scene we got. So the scene we got was they're going back into the quantum realm, where Scott's going back they're in. They're Scott back in. To collect these healing particles to help the ghost, who turns out, you know, the reformed ghost. Yeah. Right? Uh, Apparently whatever Janet does to her doesn't fully cure her. It just stabilizes right. her, so they're going to get these... Yeah, these healing particles from the quantum realm. Right. So he collects the particles, but while he's there, he ends up being stuck because all three yeah. of the Pims get dusted, turned to, yep. turn to ash. So he's stuck in the quantum realm. Yeah. With no one to pull him out, and uh, all three of the Pims are gone. So, wow. I, and this is, uh, I mean, we have no, do, do we know how far Avengers is from Civil War? Is it the exact right around the two year mark, or is it longer so that they've been together for a little while? I think it's I don't know. I think it was, I thought it was five years. Was it? Yeah, I thought it was longer than two I think as it was five well. Years. So maybe there's yeah. a they had a while to get to this point. But anyways, yeah. we skipped to that point. So now Scott is stuck in the quantum realm, which quantum yeah you know, we'll you, maybe we can mess with time now yeah you know, whatever he can do to get out of there but everybody that knows he's in there or knows how to get him out of there is yeah. is gone now so it'll be intriguing to see what happens there. see what happens there so i guess that's why he's not in if he's not in avengers 4 we know why he's stuck in the quantum realm well you would like presume that that plays into how they're going to fix things that he's going to come back with a tool they need Right, you know, like oh, I've got access to the quantum realm. I figured it out, or something like that. Right, yeah. You know, although they sent the one person who really doesn't understand the science <laughs> of it. So. Did this guy just add quantum in front of everything. <laughs> but maybe he comes yeah. out with those particles, and uh, Iron Man can do something with them, or something. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, that was Hank Pym will love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there you have it, guys. Uh, Ant Man the Wasp. Uh, really good movie. 
you go check it out, it's up there. Like I said, B, solid B plus from us. Yeah. Oh, uh, well worth it. Uh, Marvel does it again, even when they're in the small films like this. Yeah. It's uh, it's really great. And like I said, that's I don't know. <sighs> I want to see it again. Sorry, I just remembered the Stanley scene. Oh, the Stanley scene. <laughs> Stanley gets his cameo. Yes, which is pretty funny. It's so pretty definitely awesome. worth seeing for that too. <laughs> yes. We're not going to spoil it for you. Yeah. you got to go, go see that you, yourself. Yeah, go see this, this Stanley cameo. All right, guys. So tell us what you thought. Have you seen Amy on the Wasp? If you haven't, I don't know why you're watching until the end of this. <laughs> Yeah, but well, uh, tell us what you thought of it, uh, what your favorite uh, Marvel superhero movie is, or you know what your favorite relationship is in the Marvel Universe, Yeah, because I think it's some of the best in this movie here. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks guys, be sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends about us. If you want to see more videos like this, you want to support the channel, you can do so through our links down below, buying shirts from our merch store, uh, shopping through our Amazon affiliate link, or becoming a patron, you get access to shows like this early. So. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.